Uh, hi, everybody. I'm David Coleman with the Office of the CTO at Extreme Networks. And we're here with a very uh, esteemed author and uh, in, in, I can, can I say inventor, uh, Greg Innes, um, who, uh, to talk about his book, uh, Beyond Everywhere, uh, How Wi-Fi Became the World's Most Beloved Technology. And uh, as a Wi-Fi geek, I am very excited to talk about it and have you uh, here talking about this. So, Greg, could you maybe just spend just a few minutes talking about uh, your, your background and where you came from? Sure, David. Uh, and thanks for uh, for having me on this. Uh, this is great. So uh, my background, I mean, I'll just cover, you know, I was working in Silicon Valley in, in networking um, prior to uh, I, my involvement with Wi-Fi, but I'll just kind of start describing my involvement with wireless here to keep it short. Um, so I I was working on some uh, you know proprietary wireless LAN uh, projects back uh, before the IEEE standard got going, um, but um, in 1993 I put together along with two co-authors the um, proposal that ended up winning the vote within the IEEE 802.11 committee to be the foundation for the standard. Uh, that was the, the DFW MAC uh, proposal, the Distributed Foundation Wireless MAC proposal. So that was in 1993. And after that, I served as the uh, chief technical editor um, along with Bob O'Hara. Um, through the first publication of the of the original 1997 802.11 standard. It's really kind of the story of how Wi-Fi came to be. And so I was wondering if we could talk about some of these things. And what struck me about the book, almost the first 200 pages of the book um, is before the term Wi-Fi even was uh, a thing. So in 1989, the FBI did a sting operation at the Chicago Board of Trade, which is a major commodities you know, trading floor in Chicago, obviously. They did a sting operation. It was called Operation Sour Mash. And they were going after corrupt commodities chain traders who were you know, skimming money from their client accounts and other types of fraud going on. They ended up indicting, I don't know, a whole bunch of people, getting convictions. The significance of this to the Wi-Fi story is that the, the federal government required, as a result of this sting operation, that the Chicago Board of Trade and also the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, that they change their manual way of doing trades on the trading floor, which was a, a chaotic mess and replacing that manual way of of uh, managing the trades with a network of wireless trading terminals and i personally was responsible for the design of the wireless network and um it turns out that um you know many of the ideas that uh that we were working with <clears throat> on that project ultimately uh, saw their way into the the Wi-Fi discussions that we, well, the 802.11 discussions that we had as the IEEE uh, Standards Committee got started for wireless LANs. Uh, in the early days of Wi-Fi, there was a competing technology from a, a different alliance called the Open Air Alliance, and it was uh, called HomeRF. Uh, and it was actually competing with like 802.11b, and it was using... Uh, frequency hopping and it had some really big backers right so my like microsoft and intel why did wi-fi win over that competing technology that had a lot of big backers behind it right well obviously because it's better <laughs> <laughs> good answer so, yes yeah, so the um home rf was uh focused on the home well first you know to kind of set the stage for that there were a lot of naysayers about 802.11 back uh, back in those days. A lot of people, they would simply point to the thickness of the specification, and you know, which was, you know, like that thick, and say, this is way too complicated, and its complications are going to make it so that the products, when they get out in the field, they're not really going to interoperate. Let's be honest, the original version of Wi-Fi security um, 
uh, wasn't very secure and it was cracked very fast. And uh, eventually you guys had to work on uh, WPA2 and, and WPA. But at the same time, the Chinese were working on a different protocol. And uh, I was wondering if you could comment on on that WAPI protocol and then how ultimately uh, the standard security that we now use today, WPA and WPA2, it has evolved, uh, it basically won, in, including in China. <laughs> you know, there's a section in my book where I talk about the, you know, negotiations involving the Chinese vice premier and the, and, you know, Secretary of State Colin Powell got involved. I mean, it's, it was very strange to have people of this stature you know, worrying about, you know, wireless LAN authentication algorithms, you know. But um, ultimately, um, I think just the the raw success of Wi-Fi throughout the world, the interest that the Chinese manufacturers had in being, uh, you know, producers of Wi-Fi equipment and the and the desire in the in the uh, uh, in the Chinese population to, you know, kind of enjoy the benefits of Wi-Fi just like the, their brethren around the world do.